Last week, we talked about Microsoft's big breakthrough in quantum computing. They announced that they achieved the first step for a scalable platform that could bring us to a million qubits quickly by using Majorana modes, a type of topological qubits. Other scientists have now had a closer look at the publicly available evidence, and that isn't looking good. I have a quick summary. If you want to build a useful quantum computer, you need qubits, are bits with quantum properties. There are many different ways to physically create these, and Microsoft has settled on a particularly difficult yet promising way called topological qubits. These have properties that are protected by conservation laws, and the states then remain coherent for a longer duration. That is, topological states keep their quantum properties better. This means that topological qubits could make it much easier to build large quantum computers, and that's the reason why Microsoft has claimed they can build a useful quantum computer in years, not decades. It sounds like a good idea in theory. In practice, it's proved very hard to produce even a single topological qubit. The biggest criticism that Microsoft faced after their press release is that they supposedly said they had a topological qubit when really the paper that they published explicitly said they did not. However, if you read the Microsoft press release very carefully, you'll notice it doesn't say they have a topological qubit. They weaseled around the question by talking of a topological core architecture and then said they were able to create the topological qubits exotic quantum properties. The claim that Microsoft had a topological qubit came, for all I can tell, from the New York Times and was then widely copied by other news outlets. They, Microsoft, didn't exactly do much to prevent this misunderstanding. In any case, this is the least of their problems. The much bigger problem is that several experts have now looked at the paper and say there are good reasons to doubt that Microsoft has any topological qubits. The particular type of topological qubit that Microsoft uses is called a Majorana mode. They want to create it by a combination of semiconductors and superconductors. The Majorana modes should linger at the ends of short aluminium wires, given a low enough temperature and the right combination of electric and magnetic fields. In the new paper, they say that they measured the parity of these Majorana modes. Now remember that Microsoft claimed already in 2018 that they had evidence of a Majorana mode, but the paper was retracted in 2021 because of problems with the data analysis. Previous 2017 paper about their nanowires was also retracted. After this, Microsoft said they found a way to avoid this problem. First, they mathematically calculate under which circumstances these Majorana modes exist. Then they generate mock data from the calculation, develop a protocol to identify the Majorana-friendly circumstances from the mock data, because that way they can tell whether it works, and then they use the protocol on the real data. They call this algorithm the topological gap protocol, and they use it in the new paper to demonstrate that they're in the right range for the topological state to exist. However, in a comment that appeared on the archive just a few days ago, Henry Leck points out that this protocol is highly suspicious. The code is publicly available. He's tested it and says that the identification of the topological phase depends on arbitrary cutoffs that you put on the data range that you're interested in plotting. You see this here in this figure. This is the electric voltage and the magnetic field. The orange region here this is the region in which the Majorana state should exist theoretically according to the protocol. This is the protocol output for a smaller range of the magnetic field. You can see that the orange region has changed. This clearly shouldn't be the case. The question of whether the conditions are right for the topological phase shouldn't depend on what range you plot. Simply said, 
there's something wrong with that protocol. Vincent Murich, who works on topological states of matter in Jülich, says that the 2023 Microsoft paper about the topological gap protocol should never have been published. This paper should never have been published or accepted by any respected publisher. And given that this unfortunately has happened, it should be retracted. To come back to the new paper, what this means is that Microsoft has no good reason to think that the properties in their wire are good to even have topological states. This leaves the question of, well, if not that, then what did they measure? I don't know, but Sergey Frolov, who also works on topological states, says that what they might have measured could just be electrons jumping around in the wire and that the data which they present is super unconvincing. They don't even show proof that this is coming from any superconductor, not even a topological one. And the word parity somehow means that is something superconducting is jumping back and forth. But it could also be just a little charge, an electron jumping somewhere on this very complicated chip, giving this kind of bimodal signal. An electron that jumps around in a wire might still be a qubit in some vague sense. But in the Nature paper, they said that they measured the parity of these Majorana modes. So not even that is clear. Microsoft did release the full data along with the paper, but it's 96 gigabytes and it'll take somewhat longer until other researchers had time to analyze it themselves. I know you're going to complain again that Sabine is so negative, but honestly, that doesn't look good. What do you think? At the very least, we can say that the Microsoft claims suffer from a certain lack of coherence. Yes, I've been talking about quantum physics again. It's definitely my favorite topic. But did you know that I have a quantum mechanics course that you can take for free on Brilliant? My course will help you understand what a wave function is and what the difference is between superpositions and entanglement. It also covers interference, the uncertainty principle and Bell's theorem. And after that, you can continue maybe with a course on quantum computing or differential equations. Brilliant offers courses on a large variety of topics in science, computer science and mathematics. All their courses have interactive visualizations and come with follow-up questions. Whether you want to know more about large language models or algebra, want to learn coding in Python or know how computer memory works, Brilliant has you covered. It's a fast and easy way to learn and you can do it whenever and wherever you have the time. And they're adding new courses each month. And of course, I have a special offer for viewers of this channel. If you use my link brilliant.org slash Sabine or scan the QR code, you'll get to try out everything Brilliant has to offer for a full 30 days. And you'll get 20% off the annual premium subscription. So go and check this out. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.